Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be doing a very quick overview of the entire fiberglassing process for a hollow core wooden surfboard. This way, hopefully it will clear up that question of should I attempt the fiberglassing myself or send it out to a professional? There's quite a few things that you're going to need for this. One is the simple stuff like consumables. So you'll need mixing containers, masking tape, uh, razor blades for cutting your lap. You'll need a couple of chip brushes for doing your fill coat or your sand coat, as well as soft plastic squeegees for spreading the resin and obviously all of your personal safety equipment, so dust masks, gloves, long sleeves when sanding and things like that. Then you're gonna to have to decide on which resin. Now we suggest to stick to epoxies because they're a little bit easier to work with, they have a longer working time, they're less volatile and less toxic and things like that, but it is up to you what you wanna use. The system that we use is specifically built for surfboards and it's done in a few steps. So this is Kinetics resin and we use the 110 series for our laminating. So that's when we put the fiberglass cloth onto the board and we use the 100 series for our sand coats or fill coats. Not all resins offer multiple options. Some aren't suitable at all, but as long as you get one that's kind of built for marine application, you should be okay. And then you're gonna need your fiberglass cloth. Now we recommend a six ounce surfboard weave, which is one of the simplest cloths on the market. It's quite a tight weave and it gives a pretty good clarity. Six ounces is what we recommend, but you can do anything that you like. Now let's quickly go over the process before we get into things. So there's quite a few steps. Step one is your fiberglass lamination on your bottom deck. So the bottom deck gets done first, followed by the top deck. The bottom gets one layer of six ounce cloth and the top gets two. This will give it a little bit more durability, more impact resistance and things like that. Once you have those coats put down, then you do fill coats. These are the layers of epoxy that fill in the weave and give your board its clarity and its glass smooth kind of texture. Once your fill coat's done, now you cut it back to be nice and smooth, uniform, and everything like that. You will then either polish it or hit it with marine varnish, and then you're ready to go. So the first thing we have to do is the lap. Now the lap is the area where the layer of fiberglass gets folded over the edge of your board to meet the other side. So the lap that I've taped here laps the fiberglass over the entire rail, but another very common method is where you put the tape halfway up the rail so the lap meets halfway. The method that I'm showing here gives you a little bit stronger of a rail because you're doubling up the thickness of the cloth but it's not really necessary in all cases. Now with the lap tape, we can lay out the first layer of glass. So we're gonna start on the bottom here and remember the bottom gets one layer of six ounce cloth. So you'll lay that over the board, pat it out so it's sitting nice and smooth with no crimples, and then you can cut it to length. Once you've got your glass laying on your board and a nice overhang all the way around, we can trim off the overhanging material. Now, generally I would allow about 25 to maybe 50 millimeters of material below the bottom edge of the board. That way you're not gonna have a huge mess, but you're gonna have plenty of material which you can work with to fold over. Now, depending on the shape of your nose or your tail, you'll probably have to do a few relief cuts as well. So the idea here is you cut a notch out of the fiberglass, which allows you to fold it over the edge of the board without getting either any creases or any weird behavior with the glass wanting to bubble up in other areas. Now it's time for the resin. So here I'll mix up about 300 mil for this particular board of the laminating resin, which is the 110 series, and then just pour a dam in the middle of the board, which I can work out to all areas. So I use a squeegee here and I just gently move the resin around and get everything nice and saturated. Once everything's coated in resin, or at least close to coated, I'll then come back and working from the center out again, but this time I'm using quite a firm downward pressure to both squeegee out any excess resin and work out the air bubbles, but also ensure a really good bond with the wooden substrate. Once the deck is looking good, then I can start to work on the rails. So I've worked out all the resin from the center of the board and the rails are nice and wet. So now it's just a matter of folding that over and getting it onto that lapped tape. Now, one thing I'll say about when you're pressing your lap down, 
this is when little hairy wispy bits of fiberglass likes to kind of release. So I always like to have a rag on hand just to kind of wipe the tip of my squeegee so that I'm not just pulling strands randomly out and kind of laying it into the next section that I touch. And it also keeps this a little bit more uniform of finish. Because the idea here is that the fiberglass is kind of setting our depth. Um, so how thick our material should be laid on. We don't want pools of areas which you can't see the cloth. Uh, when you're laying out fiberglass like this, there's a texture to the cloth, the weave that you see. Uh, and, and you want that to be uniform across the entire layer because the next coat of glass, which is our fill coat or our sand coat, that's what brings it to be nice and smooth and glass clear, not this coat. I think that's where a lot of people go wrong when they first start fiberglassing is they don't realize that it's a multi-step process. Now once that first layer of cloth is dry, you can come in with a sharp razor knife and trim off all your excess material. And also with a bit of sandpaper, just work in that lap so it's a nice smooth transition from bare wood to fiberglass because the next step is doing the exact same thing, but on the top deck. So the top deck is practically just a rinse and repeat of the bottom deck, except this time you're gonna lay up two layers of fiberglass cloth over your deck. This gives it extra strength and well, more durability. Now just remember to allow a little bit more resin for this top deck because you've got an extra layer of fiberglass to soak in some resin. So, so generally I'll add about half the original volume onto this mixture. So if it was 300, I'll go up to 450. So you'll let that dry, sand off the lap just like before, and now it's time to look at the filler coats. Now the filler coat, which is also referred to as a sand coat and could be interpreted as the hot coat, is the second layer of epoxy that gives it that glass smooth finish and a completely translucent cloth. Now the system I use has a dedicated resin just for this, but not all resins do, so just ask the question when buying it, is this suitable for a fill coat? Now, another important side note is that not all resins are suitable for a fill coat. Now, my resin has all of the UV additives built into it, so it can hold up to a bit of UV uh, abuse, but all epoxies, no matter what, will get affected by UV rays to one degree or another. So much so that some epoxies are just not suitable for fill coats, especially in marine applications, and some, even if they are suitable, will still require a top coat of marine varnish or urethane to protect it from the UV even further. So just ask the question again when you're buying your resin, is this suitable for a fill coat on a surfboard and does it need a varnish top coat? Now the fill coat goes down a little bit differently to the lamination coat itself. For starters, you'll start on the top deck first rather than the bottom. And additionally, you'll also use a brush to spread the resin, not a squeegee. So just like before, you'll tape on that lap where you don't want the resin to creep over and you'll mix up your resin. Pour it down the middle of the board and then using a brush with light strokes, start spreading it out nice and even, working up and down the board at first, then go across the board to spread it out even more evenly, and then go up and down the board one last time to really get things perfect. What you're looking for here is a fairly uniform coating without any runs or streaks or anything like that. Once you're happy with the finish, just walk away. Don't come back and think, oh, there's a hair, I'm gonna pick that out because you will ruin the finish. The minute you go to fix it is the minute you ruin it and have to start over. So walk away. If there's something wrong with it, it doesn't matter because you gotta sand it back anyway. Now you'll let that dry, remove your tape, sand the lap if it's needed, not always needed on a hot coat because it's quite a thin layer and then you'll do the bottom. The bottom is the exact same as the top, except this time you have an option of building up a dam at your tail so you can build up the edge a little bit. So say that you went a little bit too far with shaping and you lost that sharp 90 degree edge, or you just want it to be a little bit sharper than it's currently uh, presenting itself. Here you can build up a dam and create a thick layer of resin at the tail. So you'll see here, I've taped the rear third of the board to have just a slightly dammed up tail, which I can shape with sandpaper later. Now, you'll let that dry, and that is basically it for the resin work. So once it's dry, you can come back and we can do our final sanding. The idea with this final sanding is that we remove all of the excess resin that isn't necessary to cover the weave while just leaving a very thin layer over the cloth. 
This gives it a nice uniform finish and then you can polish it up using either a automotive polisher or if you need to do your varnish top coat you can do that now as well. Now I suggest that you start with a high grit something like 400 to 600 grit because if you start any lower than that you might find that you very easily burn through all of the resin and expose some cloth and we just don't want to do that so while you're getting used to it start with a high grit here it's going to take you a long time but just do it smart. Also, it's really recommended that you do this with wet sanding, not dry sanding, because fiberglass dust is a really nasty irritant. And if you get it over your skin or in your lungs or anything like that, you're gonna have a really nasty time, whether it be from itching or breathing problems, you just don't wanna experiment. If you have a look at some of the footage where I'm power sanding this, these boards, I'm in full cover rolls with masks, gloves, everything, just to protect myself from this irritation. With that, you're pretty much done and ready to hit the water. Now, just a few things that we didn't touch on in this video. Hardware, depending on what style of hardware you're using on your board, it may need to be installed before fiberglassing, like our FCS Fusion Thin Plugs do, or after fiberglassing, but before the fill coat. So for example, the leash plugs and our vent plugs need that. So hopefully that clears up what's involved in fiberglassing. I'm sure it's gonna raise a lot of questions, so leave them in the comments below, and we'll answer all of those when we do our follow-up video series on how to fiberglass, because as you can imagine, it takes more than one video to explain the entire process. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.